guys. Uh, we did a really exciting class yesterday at my house, which was lots of fun. Um, kind of just showing you what the open house process kind of looks like. So I just wanted to finish that up with a quick video to share with you guys as well. So let me open up, kind of just put together real quickly some processes for the open house. I hope I'm sharing the right screen. Okay, great. All right, so just some strategies. So because our market right now has got such low inventory, I think it's a really great demand for us to get into as many houses as we can. So obviously we wanna list houses. If we're not able to list them, we wanna offer them for auction. We just somehow really wanna uh, get access to the homes because we know it's gonna drive tons and tons of buyers. So we haven't done open houses, at least I had it in about three years. So I just wanted to go through again, some of the um, different strategies that we talked about in person. So number one, I think what's so important to keep in mind, the goal of the open house is really to get in front of potential ready now buyers. That's the goal. So we'd love to sell the house. If the house sells, somebody happens to walk through that is perfect for them, that's awesome. But it also is a little bit of a needle in a haystack. So a lot of times if somebody's coming through the door, we might get, let's say 20 people. Well, we can only sell it to one of those 20. So we don't wanna throw out the baby with the bathwater. So, or kind of just, you know, think about just selling that house. So each open house could generate you maybe five to 20 new buyers. So we had our first weekend, even with a place that, you know, wasn't in the best condition and the best price, uh, you know, we were still able to get seven uh, different people each day. So that's 14 for the weekend, which is awesome. I uh, remember it's just free advertising, it's free promotion, and it's really good practice. You're getting in front of customers over and over again. That's just going to help you with your offers, help you give a pitch, uh, help you practice a little bit more and gives you a little self promotion as well. It also gives you the opportunity to meet the neighbors. So I know it's a really great strategy to kind of invite them to the event. Hey, we might have a bunch of cars here. Just to let you know, here's the hours it's going. You're welcome to stop by. Uh, we really want to encourage the neighbors uh, to, to learn about you and, and get to meet you as well. It's also a job interview. So that's why it's so important to dress the part, being prepared because it's really an interview. So let's say the neighbor does come over and they do come to meet you. You also want to remember that they might be looking to see what, how good of a job you're doing. If you're doing a good job, they might want to hire you when they go to sell their home. So that's a really valuable tool as well. So the online promotion. So that is so important. So we need a minimum of five days. I mean, the longer, the better. Uh, so that we have the opportunity to get the word out there. You can get enough time to promote it to, you know, our marketing team runs all the social media ads, Zillow, MLS, all those things. So we want to really let as many people know about the event as possible. We also want to prepare the home as much as possible so that it's in the best light. So I call this is like our setup process. Oops, too far there. Um, so we want it to look as good as possible. So maybe getting there early, you know, getting the chance to see, is it clean? Is it, how's it smell? A lot of times I just bring candles. I'll bring some Febreze. We want the, the house to look as best as possible. I know it's someone else's home, so we're not in complete control of it, but as best that we can, we want it to look um, really, really comfortable for the buyers coming through the door. Uh, we want to make it very welcome. So the more comfortable the client feels, the longer that they'll stay and the more information that they'll share with you about their situation. I always like to set up a table with advertising materials. So I know, you know, obviously most agents will put a MLS uh, slip in there so that there's information about that particular property. But I think it's even more important to have enough information about you. You know, wh why did this seller decide to have you do the open house? Why did they hire you? You know, here's all the things that are really, really great offers that our company can, can provide if you're considering selling your home or if you're interviewing for a buyer's agent to help you find the right home. So you don't have to do open houses every weekend. We can make this process a lot easier for you. So having that table with advertising materials is critical. Uh, as you're walking through the house, make sure you're sharing features about the house, but it's also really important that you're fact finding. What's their intention in purchasing? Who are they? Are they looking for themselves? What's their time frame and motivation, right? It's a really great opportunity to interview the client. Then of course, having the signs out, they need to be strategically placed. So we wanna make sure they're on very visible roads, different arrows, so that if you were to follow it yourself, it makes it really easy to find the home. So here's an example of kind of what I, I did on our my open house at my house, uh, different marketing literature. So it gives me little talking points of what to say to the customer. Here's the love it or leave it guarantee. Uh, gives me the chance to talk about that. Here's our referral agreement. So we also will refer and donate a part of our commission if you refer us somebody else. Do you know anyone else looking to buy or sell? I brought our worry-free listing packet, the top agent packet, some marketing literature. I always have an agreement there, a contract. If someone goes, I love it, I'm ready to buy it right now, I try to always have a contract on hand. Um, but just by placing these things there, they're more likely the customer will pick them up and take them. They might take the MLS sheet, but they might also take something like a postcard or, or something else 
uh, in addition to your business card. I also did have the laptop there, so I had my KV Core program open. I'd give the people the chance to register and sign in right there too. I know a good strategy is asking for their phone number so that you can get, you can text them, call them. Um, then you have it in your phone, which is fantastic, but you also want to make sure you're giving them a reason why they should answer your phone when you call. So I think that's why giving the offers uh, before they leave is so important. So what's uh, super important about the beginning is they're first walking in the door, you want to build rapport. So one of the things I was demonstrating, I walked right up, introduced myself, shook their hand. My name is Jennifer Kenna. Um, I really wanted to let them know I'm the one hosting this open house. Any questions you have, I'm here for you. You know, you're just making them feel a little bit more at ease, a little more comfortable. Uh, introducing who you are. Uh, be interested to learn more about them. So that's why they're there. I mean, of course, we want to tell them about the house, but, you know, here's a kitchen, here's a bathroom. We're not offering a lot of value by giving that kind of tour. So be more interested to learn about them and their situation. I do always take notes. So I normally will have, you know, maybe a cheat sheet of questions to ask or whatever. Um, but at the same time, I'm taking notes about that person because it makes them feel important as well. Uh, then you want to make sure you're giving an offer. So the buyback guarantee, a free home warranty, free house cleaning. Tell them about our hassle-free listing program if they also have a home to sell. And then doing follow-up activity before they leave. So trying to schedule a buyer consult, uh, schedule another day to show them other properties, something like that. Having a little something on the books for when we're going to follow up with them. Uh, then fact finding. So this is what's so important. So I have a series of questions and these are just examples. Um, you can come up with some of your own that you feel really comfortable with. But, you know, I like the idea when you first introduce yourself, they walk in the door, just ask them, would you like a tour or do you want to walk around the home yourself? I think that's a great, powerful question. Um, are you looking for yourself or someone else? That one kind of opens it up a little. Well, I'm looking for my daughter who's relocating from out of the area. You're trying to find out who is the actual buyer decision maker in this in this transaction. How long have you been looking for a home? Sometimes you might find some pain points here. They're going to tell you, we've been looking for months. We can't find the right property. We keep getting outbid. You might kind of pick up some of those pain points, which obviously if they have a buyer's agent representing them, those things won't happen. So how long have you been looking for a home? So that's a super valuable question to ask as well. Uh, so the price range that you want to stay in. If you saw the perfect home today, would you be prepared to write an offer? When would you like to be moved into your new home? We always want to feel out the timing and motivation. And then are you currently working with a buyer's agent? I like to say that versus a realtor uh, because it might, they might inquire, what do you mean? What's a buyer's agent? What does a buyer's agent do for me? And of course, we know from our buyer presentation all the benefits that we offer. Then we want to make them some sort of offer. So we're fact finding and then we're, we want to tell them why we're different. So one thing I normally say is one thing that we offer differently, we're able to help our clients beat out other buyers to homes. We have access to off-market properties. We work with distressed homes, builder closeouts. We can negotiate on your behalf in your best interest. You get the best deal at no cost. I think that's a pretty strong one. Uh, we can get you pre-approved a top lender at no charge. Maybe that's your follow-up activity. You're gonna help them get pre-approved. You're gonna send them the link right there on the spot from your lender um, so that they can get they can start to do that approval process. Or, hey, I'd like to be interviewed. Let's go ahead and just be straight up that I'd love to be interviewed for the job as your buyer's agent. Uh, when can we sit down for 10 to 15 minutes to discover what it is that you're looking for? I think that's really strong. And then, of course, just finishing up here, of course, you want to make sure to follow up. Um, so I know it gets busy if you maybe met 10, 12, 13 people. Sometimes it's a lot uh, to do whenever you're leaving. But number one is to make sure to give follow up to the homeowner. So that's so important to show a good service for them. They left the house. Hopefully they cleaned it up and, and left for the entire you know, weekend, possibly. So we want to make sure that we tell them how the feedback was, um, what people thought of the house. And it gives you a good opportunity to talk price. If there maybe is a price reduction needed or maybe something they need to do. You know, I got a lot of feedback that that red, red wall really needs painted. So you can kind of give them that feedback. Of course, clean up after yourself. So if we had a party and you brought cookies or drinks and all that, we want to make sure we clean up, uh, pick up all the signs that we left in their yard. Um, then following up with the leads that were generated, you know, make sure you add them to your KB Core system so they can start getting emails and properties and, and that from us. Um, I think sending that thank you email, all these are automated through the system. So just got to make sure that you turn it on uh, whenever you add the lead there, that they get that thank you email with next steps and then discuss any potential offers. So if you did get somebody interested, now's a good time to go through those offers, try to get them up as high as possible and then present them to your seller. And hopefully you sold that house at the open house. If not, Maybe you picked up 10 to 15 new Ready Now buyers. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. Thank you.